Hi and welcome to Code Tutorials. Today we'll be talking about creating interactive banners using the interactive banners widget from our key add-ons for Elementor plugin. How does this differ from a regular banner? Well, with the interactive banner, hovering over it will reveal additional information and a button that will let potential customers learn more about your product or services. And generally, banners can be useful for highlighting information, drawing attention, advertising, all kinds of things. And as we can see from the examples on this page, the interactive banners widget from key add-ons comes with numerous customization options, such as different text and image behaviors, button styles, typography settings, color options, and so on. So let's see how we can use these options I just mentioned and make the most of this widget. Head over to your page, and in the Elementor sidebar, search for interactive banners. There it is. Just drag it over to the right. And this is what the banner looks like by default. There is a background image and some placeholder text over it, as well as text that appears on hover. When you start to customize it, the first thing you can change is the layout. Other than the standard, which is the default, we have from bottom, which looks like this. Then there's the image switch. As the name implies, this layout allows for a changing image. You can upload the first one here and upload the second one, which will appear on hover, here. Then hovering over the banner will cause the images to switch. And last but not least, we have the revealing layout. And it looks like this. Ok. For my chosen design, I'm going to stick with standard, the layout we started from. And once you've picked your layout, you can start customizing it. I'll start by changing the image. You can click on this field to upload a new one. And I'll use this, insert media. Ok. Next, we can pick the image proportions. There are all these different settings you can use, but I'll stick with the original. Then we have this option, to enable the button. It's disabled by default, but I want to have a button on my banner, so I'll switch it to yes. And now when I hover, there's my button. In the field below, we can set a link for the button. I'll just put a hashtag as a placeholder, but you should add an actual URL here. Then we have the enable link overlay option. Keeping it switched on means the link we set will be active over the entire banner. You can see the whole thing is clickable when I hover over it, as I have a pointer instead of the regular cursor. By the way, you can set a link without adding a button. Simply keep the link overlay enabled and the link will stay active over your banner. If you disable the link overlay, then the only thing clickable on the banner will be the button. As you can see. I'll keep this enabled for my banner. Ok. Next, we have the content section. This is where we can replace the text on our banner. The first option is for the title. That's the text that's constantly visible on the banner. I'm going to replace it with my own. Just a second. Ok. And the other piece of text on the banner is visible only when we hover over it. It's the subtitle which we can replace here. Let me type mine in. Ok. And when I hover, there it is. The section after this is for the button. The options here let us pick things like the button layout. It can be filled, as we've seen, but it can also be outlined, which looks like this, or it can be textual, which looks like this. I'm going to stick with this one. Then we can enable a button text underline. As the name suggests, if I switch it to yes, the button will get a line drawn under it. And in the field below this, you can replace the button text. I'll change it, just a sec. There. After this, we have a section for the button icon. It lets us add an icon to our button. You can pick one from the icon library, there are several icon packs here, so the collection is extensive, or you can upload an SVG. That's what I'll do. And I'll use an SVG that's already in my media library. There. Insert. And if you're using an icon, you can pick if it will be positioned to the right or the left of the button text. We've seen the right, and this is what the left looks like. I'll keep mine on the right. There. Finally, we have the developer tools. The option here lets us display the widget in the form of a standard WordPress shortcode, in case you need it. I'll switch this back to no. Alright, that's it. Let's move on to the style tab and see what we have in there. For starters, there's the banner padding option. 
By increasing the values, you create the padding around your banner content. Since my content is too short, I'm going to need larger values for the change to be visible. And before I proceed with that, I'll click here to delink the fields and then I'll set 30 pixels at the top. And there, we can see my text has sunk a bit. Okay, I'll keep adding the values I want. I just want to make sure my content looks centered. Alright, there it is. Looking good. Moving on, we have the style section, which has different settings for the text content. The first one is the title tag. You can pick anything from h1 to the p tag. For myself, I'll set h2 for my title. Okay. Then we have the title color option. You can set any color you like. I'll use plain white for my title text. And after that, we have the title typography. With these options, you can pick things like the font family for the title. There are hundreds of fonts for you to choose from. And you can adjust the title font size using this option. You can use the slider or type. I'll set 44 pixels for mine. Okay. Then we have the weight option where we can pick any of these values to set the font weight. And using the transform option, we can make the title, for example, uppercase. And the style option lets us turn the title text to italic, among others. There's also the decoration option, which lets us add a line over, under, or through the title text. Then the line height, which can be in ems or pixels, can create a bit more space for the title. Finally, letter spacing lets us create more space between the letters in the title. And that's it for the title typography options. After this, we have some options for the subtitle. Those include setting its tag. I'll leave mine the way it is. Then there's the color, with the same color picker which lets you set any shade you like. I'll set white to match the title. And then we have another set of typography options. Since we just covered them for the title, I'll only adjust what I need. And that is the font family. Okay, there. And I'll increase the font size. 50 will do. Perfect. That's all I wanted here, so let's carry on. Our next section is for spacing style. The settings here include the subtitle margin bottom. So right now we have some space below the subtitle. If I start to increase it, well, we can see it's pushed the title text a bit down. And when we hover, there's more space between the subtitle and the title. I'll set 8 pixels for this. Alright. And we have the button margin top. Just as the preceding option, we can see it moving the title text. But now the space we create is here, above the button, and serves to separate it from the title above. I'll set 20 pixels for this. OK. After this, we have the button style section. Within it, we have the typography options for the button text. Since it has all the same settings we've seen before, I'll only open it so I can use the size option and set 17 pixels for the button text. Alright, there. Then we have these switches, normal, for options that affect the normal banner display, and hover, for options that affect the display on hover. Starting with the normal, our first option is the text color. You can choose anything you like. I'll put white for my button text. There it is. After that, we have the button background color. This works if you're using the filled button layout. Since mine is textual, this won't have any effect. And the same goes for the border color option. You can use it with the layouts that have borders, namely filled and outlined. And if your button has a border, this is where you can adjust its width and its radius, as well as the border padding. Since I don't have a border, I don't need these for my button, which has a textual layout. Given all of that, I can proceed to the hover settings. In here we have the text hover color option. Let me show you how this text looks when we use the option. I'll set, for example, this as my color. And now when we look, hovering over the banner shows the text, and hovering over the text reveals the new color. The option underneath this one is for the border hover color. But again, I don't have a border, so I don't need this option. And since the same goes for the width, radius, and padding options, I can simply carry on to the button icon style section. In here, we have the option to adjust the icon size. I'm going to set 6 pixels for mine. There, this is how it looks. And again, we have the normal and hover settings. Under normal, we have the icon color. 
you can change it the way you would any other color. But if you don't change it here, the icon will automatically take on the color of the button text. Then, in the hover settings, we have the move icon option. This option is responsible for a tiny animation effect that makes the icon move when we hover over the button. By default, it's set to horizontal short, but you can change that to horizontal and get this look. Or you can pick vertical, which looks like this. And with diagonal, you get this effect. And finally, you can set this to none to keep the icon stationary on hover. For my button, I'll keep the horizontal short animation. Alright. Then, after this, we have the icon margin option. If I start to increase the values evenly all around, the title shifted a bit. And when I hover, the icon has more space all around it. Since I don't need the same amount of space on all sides, I'll clear this and delink the field so I can set each side separately. And with no margins at all, this is what the icon looks like. It's smushed against the text. I'll put 2 pixels at the top and 10 pixels on the left to reposition it. And there, looking much better now. Underneath this, we have the button in our border style. When we open it, we can see it's empty. This is because I'm using the standard button type instead of the one within our border. This section is empty because I don't need to change a button type I'm not actively using. So let's move on to the button underline style settings. I have some options I can use here because I enabled the button text underline. That's this line here. And the options in this section are for customizing it. The first option is for changing the underline color. And you have this familiar color picker for changing it. Like so. And we can do the same for the display on hover. Then the change color becomes visible only when you hover over the button. The option underneath this one is for setting the underline hover width. And we have the same for the normal display here. You can determine how long the line will be if you don't want it to be as long as the button text. And as we saw, we have the same for the display on hover. Then the line's changed length can be seen on hover. The final option we have under the hover settings is the enable hover underline draw. It creates a slight animated effect that makes it seem like the underline is being drawn when you hover over it. I'll switch this to yes to show you. And now when I hover, there, this is what the effect looks like. I'll switch it back to no now. Okay. The next part of the options has the underline offset. It's for setting the amount of space between the underline and the button text. If I try to increase it, there, the line goes partially through the text. The higher the value you set, the higher the line will be. Therefore, I'll set 6 pixels here and perfect, the line is stuck right under the text. The option after this one, underline thickness, lets us set how thick the line will be, like so. I'm happy with the default value, so I'll clear this. And finally, we have the underline alignment. To show you the effect of this option, I first have to adjust the underline width. There. And now, if I switch the alignment from left to right, the line, with its new width, starts from the right side of the button text. And if I switch it to center, then the line is centered under the text. Okay. I'll just restore the width now. And there, the line covers the whole width of the button text. With this, my first interactive banner is done. I'll update to save the page. And I'll make a second banner now. Given that I wanted to match the design of the first one, the simplest solution is to duplicate this. So right click on your finished banner and select duplicate. Then you can drag the second banner wherever you want it on the page. So, since I want my banners to look well together, I'll keep the style settings and simply replace the content, starting with the image. I'll use this one, Insert Media. And then I can proceed to the content section, to replace the text. I'll just type over the old title, there. And I'll do the same with the subtitle. But the button can stay the same since I duplicated the element. I already have all the style, layout and alignment settings I want to use. Which means my second banner is done in under a minute. And now I can update the page to save my work. And here we are. I have two interactive banners with text, images and buttons which I can use on my site. Now if we look back over the widgets page, we can see the different design variations that we can make with the interactive banners widget from the key add-ons for Elementor plugin. 
Here at the start is the example I chose to mirror for this tutorial, but you can just as easily create something unique. The interactive banners widget is highly versatile, so what you decide to make with it is entirely up to you. I hope you found this tutorial helpful and that going through the options together has shown you how easy making elements can be with the key add-ons for Elementor plugin and its interactive banners widget. If you have any questions, comments or suggestions, please drop us a line in the comments below. Also, make sure to subscribe to our channel and be the first to learn about new theme guides and tutorials. Thanks for watching.